to this episode of Horrific History and Hauntings. I'm Beth. And I'm Randy. We're your hosts, here to talk about the stories that the history books ignore. From horrific epidemics and ghostly hauntings to the catastrophes and tragic events that have sickened humanity. Yes. Now what are you telling me about today? We're going to be discussing dangerous beauty trends throughout history, but I'm just going to quickly mention, not go into... A couple of things that happened in today's history. The United States declared war on Japan. Franklin D. Roosevelt. I December guess. 7th, 1941. A day that will live in infamy. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. And then people started stomping. Also, John Lennon was shot in 1980 today. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. It predates me. Well, so does World War II, but we hear about one more often. It's like the Roman Empire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had more fun learning about the World War II. So do I. Moving on into dangerous beauty trends throughout history in the Victorian era. I'm sure you've heard us mention it if you've listened to any of our other episodes. The pale skin was a symbol of beauty and social status. And tuberculosis. And tuberculosis. And people admired the look of the symptoms that came with the tuberculosis. Yay. Women would try to intentionally get the disease to obtain the pale skin, rosy cheeks, and red lips. We covered tuberculosis and I immediately felt like I caught it. (laughs) <laughs> Cosmetics were toxic during this time as well. They contained substances such as lead, which would help to make the skin pill as well, arsenic, which was thought to make the skin resemble porcelain, and women would consume arsenic wafers to achieve a pale and translucent skin. We do not advise any of this. No, do not do that. No, not at all. No, no arsenic or lead, please. No. Or radium, because that's the next one. Oh, the radium girls. Yes. It was used in face powders and paints to make the skin glow, which I'm sure it did that. Yeah, until it rotted away. Yeah, and then you don't have to worry about your glowing skin. Women would use corsets to achieve the hourglass look, which would cause physical deformities, compressed organs, restricted breathing, fainting, constipation, indigestion, difficulty performing just simple everyday tasks, It would deform rib cages and shift internal organs. And this was mostly if you didn't use them properly, if you tried to go too tight, too tight. I think the 20 inch waist was what you were supposed to do. There was a number. I don't know if that's right. Extremely long titled guide on how (laughs) slim your waist should be. Yeah, but it mostly was only a problem if they tried to go below that measurement. The intro to the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> Women in London must have learned not to breathe. Mm-hmm. Hair care products involve toxic substances as well. Ammonia, which I want to say is still used in some hair dyes. It smells like it. Yeah. It was used to stimulate hair growth as well as remove unwanted hair. And I don't know how they thought that it could do both. At the same time. It couldn't. You know, that's a big thing of cure-alls. They they will cure all, which includes contradicting um, ailments. Yeah. I guess you just have to rub the bottle or whatever it was in and wish that it gave you whichever option you wanted. Wish upon a patent medicine. (laughs) This causes severe damage to the scalp and hair follicles, which actually lead to hair loss. So, yes, I guess it can... Give you the hair loss, not the hair growth. I dyed my hair twice in my life and underwhelmed both times. <laughs> it causes scalp irritation. And if inhaled in excessive amounts, it causes respiratory problems. That's the ammonia. Yeah. It's like having a litter box that's not been cleaned. Mm-hmm. And to have seductive eyes, I guess you would say, which was considered sparkly and large, women would use eye drops made with belladonna or also known as nightshade, and lemon juice. This sounds remarkably painful. <laughs> you want yourself to look like an anime character. Porcelain Pretty skin. Pretty much, yes. That's a good way to explain <laughs> it. I got a, an anime-themed tabletop role-playing game. It's called uh, B-E-S-M, Big Eyes, Small Mouth. It's literally in the title. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds like what they're um, wanting yeah. to do. I was thinking of the girl on um, Million Ways to Die in the Wild West. The woman was saying, are I your eyes too big or something like that? Yeah, she was a uh a snake I think she salesman. does have pretty eyes, though. Belladonna is a toxic flower, and it would cause, well, still causes, because it's a very common thing, 
dilated pupils, blurry vision, increased heart rate, and hallucinations. No wonder they have those white eyes. (laughs) (laughs) And (laughs) the walls, they're moving. (laughs) It was actually used by Marilyn Manson as a drug to give his followers, I guess, to help them. Follow him and his crazy ideas. Please be more malleable. We need to kill the rich. (laughs) Yeah. That's what he says. And also it was the time of a lot of smoking weed and doing drugs. Yeah. In general. When ingested, it can also cause a dry mouth, seizures, and possibly death. A couple of those sound more serious than the first. Yes. And if you've ever watched Practical Magic. I have not. In small doses, they said that you can use it in tea to help you relax, but I don't think I would take that chance. No. To whiten their teeth, Victorian women would use, again, ammonia and charcoal. I can see the charcoal. You could buy char or activated charcoal to get rid of toxins, which is not a thing. Yeah. Um, um, and you can find it in toothpaste, too. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, toothpaste. Which is strange when I mention later on. But I'm I mention. bought some just to say I got it. I hated the taste of it. I did, too. It was horrible. It made me throw up. If I'd have done that, I'd have never touched it again. I didn't touch it again. Well, somebody did. It's gone now, but it had to have been Scott. No, normally, even if I don't like something, I'm so cheap and stingy that I will use it until it's completely gone. I couldn't even do it with this. Mm -hmm. I I hated the taste of it. Yeah. Ammonia was believed to have teeth whitening properties. Does it? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't normally. Go stick your face in the litter box. (laughs) No, no, (laughs) I don't want to do that. (laughs) I'm whitening my teeth. Hold on. What are you doing? (laughs) Oh, gross. You got to get down to the deeper uh, well, parts. Well, my dog's like getting in the litter box. Maybe we could take a look at their teeth before and after. Yeah. Could be why Holly's teeth got cleaner. Oh. It could lead to gum irritation. How do you pronounce E-N-A-M-E-L? Enamel. Enamel? Yeah, enamel. You read it on any toothpaste package now. <laughs> enamel erosion and other dental problems. And the charcoal has abrasive properties that could damage the tooth enamel as well. It's like chewing on sand. It could erode the tooth, uh, cause tooth sensitivity, and particles get it could get embedded in the gums, causing irritation and lead to infections. They would also use burned bread as a type of toothpaste. It did apparently remove some surface stains on the teeth, but... But left you smelling like an old toaster. Yeah, it didn't help the oral hygiene, and it could also cause harmful bacteria in the mouth. Also, it could cause cuts, which... Could uh, cause infections. Yeah. Burnt toast cut your mouth. Yeah. The uh, top of your mouth mainly. Moving on to perfume. Mercury was used. It can be absorbed through the skin, leading to mercury poisoning. You know, I didn't remember that, but I have a whole bottle of it. Uh-huh. I'd been using it as a lotion. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I didn't use it as a lotion. <laughs> oh. It causes skin irritation, rashes, dermatitis, and if used with extended periods... It can cause neurological issues such as tremors, insomnia, and mood disturbances. That's where you get the phrase, mad as a hatter. Yes, it is. That's all the mercury that they worked with. Still not quite sure how and why they did it, though. It pools in the brain. Yep. Makes you think your head would be heavy. He's heavy-headed, which means he's mad as a hatter. They would also use nitrobenzene in perfumes, which is a highly toxic chemical used to make aniline. aniline. I don't know what you're saying. A-N-I-L-I-N-E. I I had to look it up because I didn't know what it was. It's used in the production of dyes and rubber. Mm -hmm. And they put it in perfume. Great for them. (laughs) It causes skin irritation, such as rashes and redness, respiratory problems, liver damage, kidney damage, damage to the nervous system, headaches, dizziness, and nausea or dangerous beauty trends. The tiny feet, which is known as the golden lotus in China, became a trend in the 13th century, and it was because the ideal bride was expected to have three-inch feet. Oh, I remember this. It's still, we even had it in our history books. hmm And to achieve this... Binding. Yes, the girls would bind their feet from a very young age, and it would prevent their feet from growing properly, so the toes would kind of grow down. Like built-in high heels. Yeah. Eh, well... You tiptoe everywhere. And on your heel. It's like a heel tiptoe. It's well, yeah, arch. but it's foot. also going to be more painful because your toes are growing deformed. They're growing down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Crawling around on all fours. Obviously, what they wanted to happen, it caused permanent deformities, lifelong disabilities, 
And it also caused open sores and restricted blood circulation, which would cause increased risk of infections. Mm-hmm. At a time without antibiotics. It also caused the girls to not be able to lift their feet or walk properly. So you, sure. I'm assuming, would see a bunch of girls dragging their feet because they hurt so bad. Crawling on all fours. Yeah, that too, I guess, is a way to do it. Moving on to some weight loss options. Tapeworm pills. Everybody knows that, I'm sure, or heard it. Yeah. I think you can still get them in South America. Yeah. Um, I want to say you're right. I feel like I've heard that. It was common in the early 1900s. Women would swallow tapeworm cysts in pill form in an attempt to lose weight. The tapeworms would grow in the intestines, and it was believed that the worm would ingest the food, which would lead to weight loss. I guess technically it did, but this would cause hazards such as the tapeworm growing up to 30 feet and causing side effects such as malnutrition, because that's pretty much what you were doing anyway. You're feeding a 30-foot worm. (laughs) Yeah. Digestive issues, cyst formations in organs, epilepsy, and dementia. Fascinating. I didn't know about the dementia part before. Once the person reached their weight goal, they were supposed to take an antiparasitic antiparasitic pill to eliminate the tapeworm. You know, our uncle one time had a tapeworm. I remember Memo telling me this. And the medication they gave him to get rid of it gave him such bad diarrhea, he couldn't even make it to the bathroom, which was an outhouse at the time. He couldn't make it from the house to the outhouse. And she found him going to the bathroom in the middle of the yard and leaving a tapeworm. Yeah, there. The, at least the tapeworm was there. That Maybe sounds, don't eat a tapeworm. Yeah, don't eat a tapeworm. Sounds unpleasant. And I, I don't think he did it on purpose. I think it, that, no, that one was, was definitely that was just, accidental. That was just, you know, badly cooked pork or something. Yeah. Other dangerous weight loss techniques used throughout history included smoking cigarettes, ingesting arsenic, using laxatives, and now for a few dangerous beauty trends pertaining to eye makeup. I lip- imagine there's a lot of infections here. Yeah, you shouldn't mess with your eyes. Then again, you shouldn't eat poisons and tapeworms either or lather them on your skin. There was lead-based eyeliners. The lead was used to enhance the pigmentation in the eyeliner. Just like paint. Yes, to produce darker colors. And this could cause reproduction issues, including harm to developing fetus if exposed to lead while pregnant and low birth weight and development problems in the child. Uh Uh-huh. I hear a lot of the, what is it? Behavioral problems come from lead. Yeah. And that's why we got unleaded gas now. Mm, probably why we use graphite instead of lead in pencils, too. I don't know if that's just a cheap thing or not. It, <laughs> it writes probably, better. Yeah. Eye enhancers that contained arsenic was used to get eyelashes to eyelashes to grow longer and thicker. They don't sound right. No. Using eye enhancers made with arsenic could cause skin lesions, nausea, abdominal pain, diarrhea, organ failure, cardiovascular issues, neurological damage, and eventually death. All for those beautiful eyes. Yep. And it didn't even do what it promised. No. I mean, I I assume it didn't. Surely it didn't. Um. I don't, I've never heard of arsenic causing hair growth. Was it arsenic? I want to say that mom was talking about one of our great aunts using, I want to say it was arsenic on her fingernails, like she would rub it on her fingernails to try to get them to grow. Uh-huh. Sounds, sounds about right. You'll have to talk to her about it, but I, I forgot which one. Eyeshadows were made with mercury to create a metallic or shiny look. I could see it looking great. hmm Obviously, Egyptians used some of these to create their shadowy, why am I not a girly girl, um, shadow look, maybe? I have no idea. I don't know. Either way. It was used to, for a dramatic or glamorous look. Because, you know, you think glamorous, shiny. Yes, a disco ball. I'm shiny. Mercury is highly toxic, as we've mentioned before. Yep. And can be absorbed through the skin and cause rashes, irritability, tremors, neurological problems, death. I like to call it my heavy lotion. (laughs) (laughs) And some other odd beauty trends. In the 6th century, another method used to look pale in ancient Roman Greece was draining the blood. That'll make you pale for a long time. It's certainly quicker. <laughs> and all you have to do is eat a good meal afterwards and you should be fun. Mm-hmm. Well, other than the fact you cut yourself with a knife that had been cut by 50 other people. <laughs> ancient Romans would have Portuguese urine imported by the gallons to use as mouthwash. Ammonia remained a main ingredient in toothpaste and mouthwash up until the 18th century. This didn't necessarily kill, but it's still an interesting and gross fact. 
even back in school, I heard about the Romans and their taste for urine. Yeah. I didn't know it was Portuguese. I don't know why. I don't know. It had to be Portuguese. That's, I'm wondering if that part is just an exaggeration. Because how would you know that? Maybe they had a better diet. Mm. Mm. Or a worse diet. Maybe it stank. I don't know. <laughs> dehydrated. <laughs> this is where we dehydrate the people. All of Portugal is the empire's urine factory. <laughs> I would probably sell my own urine if I could. Oh, you certainly could. There's people that do it on eBay all the time. Coco Chanel was photographed after spending too much time in the sun in the 1920s, and this was believed to be one of the reasons that the more tan look became more popular. Tan's okay, but if it ain't natural, it don't look right. No. You come out looking like an orange. It's come a long way compared to what it used to be, but a lot of people do it too much and too often. And tanning Causing beds. it to Those are dangerous. look bad. Yeah. Don't expose yourself to the sun without protection. Yeah. It's deadly. Black teeth was considered beautiful in Japan and Vietnam. It had a deeper meaning that was associated with spiritual beliefs as well. It was intended to protect a person from bad energy. And I want to say it was women that did this. From the 8th century to 1870, they would paint teeth with a solution made of iron fillings, black tea, and vinegar. They would paint their teeth every other day, and it would start when... Women reached sexual maturity, which apparently was 13. Uh-huh. Yeah. It signified that they were eligible for marriage. Oh, look at her smile. Oh, she's available. Uh. She only comes up to your hip. That's okay. <laughs> oh, ew. People in ancient Greece thought that unibrows were attractive. I guess it's your own preference. I can imagine going out of your way to make yourself have a bigger unibrow. Yeah, it's not my preference, but if it's your preference, go for it. To achieve this look, women would glue together goat hair with tree resin and then they would dye it black because they all had black hair i'm assuming they either all had black hair or i don't know i don't know enough about grease grease i want to say they like do have dark hair because um i've been watching a little bit of full house and uncle jesse is has dark hair and he's supposedly greek he's got a lot of greek in him but i don't know that's a tv show so who knows they also had an anti-baldness solution, which was a paste made of horseradish, cumin, nettles, and pigeon poop. This one was for the men, I want to say. It didn't work. Yeah, I'd imagine it wouldn't. Yeah. I'd say it gave people some, some sicknesses, though. Yeah. You, this little sore on your head gets full of pigeon poop, and then you have a big open wound rotting in your head. Yeah. Uh, that's probably what happened. I bet the hair didn't grow there, though. No. Ew. If it did, imagine what it smelled like. Yeah. Hopefully cumin. In 1936, Isabella Gilbert invented a dimple machine. It was, it had a face-fitting spring. It carried two tapered nubs that pressed against the cheeks and made them look ridiculous. <laughs> uh, if you look up the images, I suggest you do. But for the next 10 minutes, you'll have dimples. <laughs> and it looks like a mild version, to me anyway, of something that you would find in the Saw movies. It's more funny than scary, though. But it looks ridiculous. I suggest once this episode is over, you look that up. No eyebrows and hairlines were considered a symbol of high intelligence during the time of Elizabeth I. Walnut oil and bandages soaked in ammonia and vinegar were used to remove excess hair. The nair of its day. This one's good. Cat feces and urine was used in some cultures as a way to remove hair. This was because of the ammonia in it. But this is not a well-documented thing, so it could be one of those that is just said. It's cat uh, urine. Yeah. However, obviously, ammonia is in the cat feces and urine, so. Well, they would have just loved our litter boxes. It's like a little <laughs> makeup farm. I wonder if you could get pink eye. I'd say more like they got parasites. Yeah, that too. And this is also not well documented, but it's said that during the 18th century, women would use lard to shape their wigs, and this would attract rats that would turn the wig into a nest, and that the rats would stay in the wigs for weeks at a time. My summer wig, no. <laughs> in an attempt to keep the rats away, women would sleep with cages around their heads. I don't think they sleep in their wigs. I don't know why you would sleep with your wig. So that's Especially what I'm saying. This one wig. was not well documented. X ray machines were used in the mid 20th century to help with acne, eczema, and hair removal. I could see that. And it was in salons. They had X ray machines in salons. The thing is, it would remove hair. It definitely would remove your hair. Um, also, it would kill you. Mm -hmm. I could also see the, um, another rant about sawbones, uh, or I mentioned, they have a whole episode on acne cures. 
you might want to look at that if you're into it, the podcast Sawbones, because they done some wild, wild things to get rid of it in history. Not just x-rays. It is irritating. I don't really have a problem with it anymore, but as a teenager, yeah. Oh, it's always definitely had a with painful it. and I've, irritating. I've never, in the last 25 years of my life, I've had it and it never went away. No matter what medication or rounds of antibiotics I take, it comes back in a few weeks and um, it's just there. And I'm not taking antibiotics all my life. You know. Maybe you should try an x-ray. <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood, I haven't <laughs> had one. Oh, I, wait, I have. My face. Teeth. I have. When your dog bit me. Because they thought maybe he had messed something up in there. What dog bit you? Titan. Titan wouldn't do that. He did, though. Uh, you say that. I don't believe you. I have the scar. Yes. 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 That could have been Holly. In my hand. It was not Holly. <laughs> anyway. Uh, eventually, they did make it illegal to have x-ray machines either in salons or in your home. <laughs> if you're not a trained professional, you shouldn't be using them. Not in a doctor's office or emergency room type area medical area i like that meme it says uh uh says you is this safe and the doctor says yes it's perfectly safe as they're sliding on a giant lead yeah. vest and running behind a wall <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and that's all for this episode well that was educational ish thank you for telling me yeah, now you can come up with a nice night skin hair care routine. You just rub some mercury on you. and I've got a litter box to go through. And then you go through the litter box and put it on areas. Yeah. Wherever. I, I don't. I yeah. know how to make nair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all kinds of good stuff. Go find some pigeon poop and remove any unwanted hair the only pigeons or no it was to make hair grow wasn't it It if you need hair to grow go find you some pigeon shit if you like what we have been talking about here we have two other podcasts in the gruesome gaming group that's our podcast network we have brother knows quest podcast where i tell my sister about tabletop role-playing games we cover a different one each week and we have leveling duo it's a podcast for me and my friend dakota talk about well video games that we really enjoy uh they could be most of them are from our childhood, teenage years and up. But we do talk about some newer ones, things we've played and really want to talk about. You can find the links to all of our socials in a link in the description of this episode. If you're on YouTube, we'd appreciate it if you subscribed, like, ring the bell icon so you get notified, and uh, share with someone. Now, our website in the link tree will have all of the podcasts we have. And it takes you to links where you can subscribe to each of individually. If you want them on your podcast app or whatever, leave a review. Tell us what you think. Uh, the social links in that link tree will also let you contact us or follow us. The Twitter's easiest to follow because I'll put updates about things we're doing. And just let us know what you think. And thank you for listening. I've been Ramey. And I'm Beth. This has been HHNH. Bye-bye. <laughs>